am I doing on time? <laughs> I'm just joshing you guys. God. It's actually my uh, most used line during sex, believe it or not. I've had sex. Uh, for free, too. It was great. What a weekend. Frickin' New York, yeah, coming out here and just partying it up, man. I got, uh, got a little crazy. I got kicked out of the club on Friday for wearing sweatpants, too. <laughs> I was pissed as the woman was dragging me out of there by my waistband. I was like, are you serious? Are you serious right now, ma'am? This is Sam's Club, right? <laughs> pretty sure I'm not the only person in here wearing sweatpants right now. And she was like, no, sir. No, you ain't. But she's definitely the only one walking around with a giant boner right now. And I was like, giant. All right. <laughs> you win. You win. I'll go to Costco. They got better samples there anyways. Uh, so I was heading over to Costco, right? And uh, off the side of the freeway, I passed this big old billboard for a local hospital, true story. And there were four older women on it, and right across their chests, it read, every woman deserves a mammogram. When I read that, I thought to myself, wow, that sounds like something Dr. Huxtable would have probably said, doesn't it? <laughs> It's my only Cosby joke tonight, so you guys can take it or leave it, and that's up to you. And I'm not here to put down or to condone what he did or didn't do. I wasn't there. I'll be honest with you. But I will just remind you guys that we all do stupid things. We do. Even myself, and I know it seems hard to believe, but uh, I mean, my girlfriend just got pissed off at me like a week ago because she caught me using one of her precious dream catchers as an egg slicer. <laughs> yeah, she comes running into the kitchen in hysterics. She's like, oh my god, Ryan, you know that's not what those are for. And I was like, no, I don't, babe. <laughs> I have no idea what these are for. In fact, I don't think that you know what these are for. Besides, I have been dreaming about this egg salad sandwich all day long. So as far as I'm concerned, dream caught. And I hate whenever I'm around the same person or the same group of people for too long and they have a really thick accent. Because I always start to catch and like emulate the accent without even trying, and sometimes it can be pretty dang embarrassing. For instance, about six months ago, I was down in Texas, hanging out with my good buddy. Uh, like the entire time I was down there, he's got a real thick accent. I knew it was going to happen eventually. A couple days into the trip, we went out to meet up with a few of his buddies, you know. And as soon as I go to introduce myself to one of them, I'm like, because my friend is deaf. Uh, so that was the accent that I picked up. You can see how that shit would be embarrassing, right? <laughs> like, uh, I think it would suck to move back in with my dad in my 30s, but I can't say for sure because Jesus did it, and <laughs> seems to be working out just fine for him, doesn't it? <laughs> hey, I'm not here to make fun of Jesus, you guys. I think he was a great dude. I mean, from what I've read. Like, he went around pretty much his entire life performing miracles for all sorts of people that he met and apparently never performed any miracles on himself. I think that's pretty dang cool. I think if Jesus was to perform one miracle on himself, though, even just one, like, small miracle, it should have been to invent the nail gun, right? I mean, like, no, seriously, that would have made his job here on Earth a hell of a lot easier. For those of you who aren't laughing at that, obviously it's been a while since you've read your Bibles. Jesus was a freaking carpenter, you guys. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Made this job easier. Man, if my grandmother knew the sort of jokes that I was telling these days, I swear she would be rolling over in her grave. Actually, come to think of it, maybe she wouldn't be, because my grandmother died in a fire. So obviously she wasn't that great at rolling over. Now was she? <laughs> Not one of her strong suits. You guys want to hear something cool? I, uh, after three years of dating, have finally found out what my girlfriend's favorite sexual position is. Uh, reverse psychology. <laughs> yeah, she uses that a lot. Been using that a lot. It works though. It works, so I can't really complain. You know, and I'm not the kind of guy who just makes fun of her behind her back like this, you know, when she's not here. I do it to her face too. I like to razz her a little bit, you know, when we're out in public or whatever. Uh, one of my favorites recently has been, like if we are, uh, you know, shopping, purchasing something together, I like to be like, well, when we break up, who is going to keep that? <laughs> the last time I did this, she like flipped out on me. Uh, she's like, oh my god, Ryan. Oh my god. Are you serious? Are you serious right now? <laughs> this is milk. This is milk. You really think that we're going to break up that soon? And 
then I was like, holy cow. With that attitude, <laughs> who knows? Who knows? When does it expire? <laughs> oh man. She, uh, we also got in another argument over milk. Um, this time she was right as well. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys realize this, but soy milk is not actually Spanish for I am milk. <laughs> I was wrong. <laughs> it's a different sort of milk altogether. She loves winning arguments like that. Also loves it when she thinks that she said something like super funny and got one over on me. Uh, like a couple months ago, she comes in the room and she's like, you know what, Ryan? I think that when we have kids, I'm gonna be the favorite parent. And I was like, well, you're probably right, because if we ever have kids, you're gonna be the only one they've ever met. So, <laughs> by default, I certainly hope you are the favorite. That's my time. Thank you guys for coming out.